All right, and we are back for another video. Um, another video on some mock exam solutions. This one, in this one, we'll be solving a couple of inequalities: one with an absolute value and one with uh, looks like a quintic. So, <laughs> buckle in. Here we go. So, solve the inequality and express the solution in interval notation. Uh, x plus three under absolute values is less than seven. So we want to find every x such that when you add 3 to it, the size of what you get is still less than 7. So, you know, I could think about this a little bit and say, hey, if I if I added 4 to 3, that gives me 7. So 4 might be like one of these boundaries. And then I could also think about it in the other way. How small can I make x? Uh, you know, I could think about like what number minus 3 is still 7. And that's 10. So what if I switch the signs? I plug in negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. Absolute values makes that positive 7 again. So if I sort of work my way the other in the other direction, I think I might be able to go something like this. The interval between negative 10 and 4, not including the ends. And actually, this is the result. Uh, but how do we see that algebraically? Here we go. So when you have an absolute value, uh, remember that you've got two situations. You've got the situation where you have the inside is positive, and if the inside is positive, then what does the absolute value say? The absolute value function says that the inside doesn't, it's not changed at all. Okay, so we have exactly what's written here, but no uh, but no absolute value. But then what if x plus 3 is negative? So this is case 1, case 2. Case 2 is what if x plus 3 is actually less than 0? Well, the absolute value, by definition then, negates the inside, doesn't it? So we're going to say the negative of this is less than 7. Okay, because that's what the absolute value does. If you've got a positive number, so if, if the what you plug in is positive, what you get out of the absolute value is just whatever you plugged in. If the number you plug in is negative, um, you get the opposite of what you have here. Okay, so that's what I've done. This first case is where x plus three is a positive number and then the absolute value doesn't do anything to it. The second case is where the absolute, the, sorry, the number we're plugging in, which is x plus three is negative, and so we have to negate it. And this gives you right away um, the more common way of writing this. This is usually where students jump right to, right here. So usually there's these two starting points for absolute values where students start and it's like this. You, you don't change what's written underneath the absolute value in either case. So x plus 3, x plus 3. What you change is the right side and the inequality sign. So the first case is you don't change a thing at all. You just drop the, drop the absolute values. The next one is you don't change what's under the absolute value. You change the direction of the inequality and you negate the other side. That's usually where students start. If you want to start here, that's perfectly fine as well. But now what we've got is we've got two problems to solve. Okay, um, so here we go. We've got x plus three less than or equal or less than seven. So we'll just subtract three over to the other side, and we'll clearly get x is less than four, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then down here we'll add, we'll subtract three again. And we'll say x is greater than negative 10. Okay. And so keep in mind that in this case, we were making sure that uh, this was positive and this was negative down here. Um, so we're saying that for the positive numbers, the, sorry, the non negative numbers, x has to be here. 
Okay, uh, I guess there was a zero here, not there. So x was like this. And then in the other direction, we had, we had a zero down here as well. Um, we would have something similar. It's so like negative three less than or equal to x. Oh, greater than or equal to x. Um, greater than or equal, or then greater than negative 10. The end result is that they, these two intervals are glued together at that negative three. And so these two in combination give us the result negative 10 to four is our interval or on our number line negative 10 up to four open circles because we've got open endpoints here or in set builder notation every x such that such that x is in negative 10 to four or you could do it you could do it this way or you could say uh, negative 10 less than x less than 4 uh, both these are okay and there you have it so that's a solution to this one for the next one solve the following inequality and express the solution in interval notation this is a, this is a nice one where we've got uh, some factoring to do first um, and we're going to work with that product property that we had before where we're taking po products of positives and negatives and checking signs. So the first step in, in problems like this is to ask, you know, can I solve for all these zeros? You know, and the answer is yes, I think you can. Uh, we're going to factor this as x cubed. I notice both terms have a factor of x cubed. At least this one's got x to the fifth, right? What's left here is x squared after taking out x cubed. After taking out x cubed here, we have a 4 left. So I've just factored this, and I can factor this further. x squared minus 4 is a difference of perfect squares, so this, this naturally factors like this. That should be something that just is second nature to us at this point. And then we've restated our initial inequality, just like that. Okay, we haven't changed a thing. This is still this. Um, but now we have a simpler problem to solve. We want to know where this is non-negative, where it's either 0 or where it's positive. And this is a product of three things, x cubed, x minus 2, x plus 2. So the typical way of doing this is uh, writing these factors in sort of a table manner. And then I'm going to write just the product. This last row is, is kind of the most important one. And it's just going to be the product of all of these. Right, so the product of all three of these is exactly that. Then what I'm going to write up here is a partition, uh, a breaking up of the real number line at the zeros. So I notice if I plug in 0 for x here, this whole thing is 0. If I plug in 2 here, this whole thing is 0. If I plug in negative 2 here, this whole thing is 0. Right, so this, these are the three zeros. So we have on our real number line these three intervals from negative infinity up to negative 2. At negative 2, we have a 0 here. Then we have from negative 2 to 0. 0 because we've got another 0 here. And then we've got from 0 up to positive 2. Again, we stop at this 2 because of this factor having a 0 at 2. And then from 2 all the way up to infinity. These are the three intervals of the real num the four intervals on the real number line uh, that are naturally split apart because of these zeros. Okay. These zeros are pretty obvious once you've factored it. Uh, so, you know, showing your work up till here, factoring it, and then saying, oh, here's my zeros. 
I understand that. That's fine. Um, so this is where the, the majority of the work is, is determining this. What you do now is you ask yourself, right? We're, we're asking ourselves in total, where is this product positive or zero? Well, we know it's zero at every one of these zeros. So we're going to remember that. But what about in these intervals divided up by the zeros? Well, we're going to look at each factor. Because if you've got three factors multiplied together and all factors are positive, well, then you have a positive product. So if I plug in a number smaller than negative 2, what about these factors? We're going to cube a negative number. That's still negative. We're going to take away 2 from a negative number. That's still going to be negative. We're going to add 2 to this number, but the number is smaller than negative 2. So that's not enough to make it positive, which means we still have a negative here. So overall, we have a negative product. So this interval will not be part of our solution because we're looking for positive, right, positive values here. OK, how about in here? A number between 0 and negative 2. It's not smaller than negative 2, just a little bigger. So anything in here is negative, so cubing it makes it negative. Subtracting 2 still keeps it negative. But now adding 2, that's that adding 2, that's enough to push it above 0 because we're, we're not taking numbers smaller than negative 2. Okay, so the product of two negatives and a positive is a positive. So this is part of our solution right here. Okay, in here, 0 to 2, uh, we cube a positive number that gives us a positive. We subtract 2 from some number that's not bigger than 2, and that brings us below 0. We add 2 to a positive, we still have a positive, and here the product is negative because we got a positive times a negative times a positive. And lastly, we pick any number bigger than 2. That's a positive number cubed, still positive. Subtracting 2 from a number that's bigger than 2 is still positive. Adding 2 to a positive number is still positive. So here we have positives. So we have a positive product here in this interval. Okay. So what's the final conclusion? What's our solution? What's well, these two intervals? And I'm going to write them without brackets yet, except this one. Um, there's a union in between here. And now what about the end points? Well, we remember, because we're looking for zeros as well to be included, we remember that we need to include the zeros. So we're going to have square brackets around these three edges of our intervals. So we can include negative 2 because that makes it a zero product. We can include 0 because that makes it a zero product. And we can include 2 because that makes it a zero product. Infinity, we don't include because infinity is not a, a number. It's just pick any number that you want that's above 2. That's what that's saying. OK, that's it for this question and that uh, previous one. We'll come back next time for uh, another couple videos, another couple problems.